Hi, I'm Scott Lachlan with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Fox and Roach Realtors. Today, I'm honored to be marketing one of the oldest and most historic houses of my career. Welcome to the Montier Homestead. In 1682, the first suburb of Philadelphia was formed when 15 Quakers from Cheltenham, England, purchased acreage to the northwest of Philadelphia. One of those original landowners was Humphrey Moray, who acquired 250 acres on the westernmost edge of what is now Cheltenham Township. The very first map of Philadelphia is the Holmes map of the province of Philadelphia from 1681, showing all the original purchasers of land from William Penn. Although spelled incorrectly, you can see Humphrey Moray's tract of land just below the Penn Manor of Springfield. Mr. Moray also became the first mayor of Philadelphia in 1691. While the Quakers were one of the first groups to condemn slavery, many were early slave owners. Humphrey Moray was no exception and did own slaves on his farm in Montgomery County. One of his servants was named Cremona. In Humphrey Moray's will dated 1715, Mr. Moray manumitted his slaves and they became free persons. Richard Moray inherited his father's property and Cremona remained in the service to the Moray family as a house servant. Richard fell in love with Cremona, and they lived as husband and wife, though not legally married as that was against the law, and had five children, the youngest of which they also named Cremona Jr. In 1753, Richard Moray passed away, and in his will, he gave 198 acres to his wife, Cremona. This likely made Cremona Moray who took his surname, although never legally married, the wealthiest African-American at the time. Because the laws of the time prohibited African-Americans from owning land, Richard Moray established a trust managed by a neighboring Quaker family that honored his wishes after his death. Cremona Moray Jr. married John Montier in 1766. Mr. Montier was from Martinique, and he ran a wagon delivery service in the area. It is this couple that first constructed the house that has now been incorporated into the larger structure at 312 Limekiln Pike. First, the Montiers lived in the barn they constructed in 1766. Their home was completed sometime around 1772, and they moved from the barn to the house. They were likely one of the very few African-American landowners in Pennsylvania at the time. The original home was a small two-story structure, now the back wing of the current house, that housed a single living space on the first floor and bedrooms upstairs. A separate spring house is now the garden shed just to the south of the main house today. The house was expanded twice in the 1800s. The Montiers had four children, Joseph, Solomon, Robert, and Hiram between 1768 and 1780. As you can see from the very first U.S. Census, six of the Montiers were listed as all other free persons. This portion of Glenside used to be known as Guinea Town due to the large number of African Americans living in the region. There was even an African American cemetery on Lime Kiln Pike on lands donated by Cremona Montier. Unfortunately, that cemetery was moved when the road was widened in the 1960s. Dr. William Pickens III is the sixth great-grandson of Solomon Montier. His mother was the one that kept the family history and documentation that was crucial in pulling together this amazing story. Dr. Pickens discovered two family portraits under the bed of their uncle in Philadelphia. These portraits of Hiram and Elizabeth Montier are what began the amazing contribution to the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the creation of the documentary by Karen Smiles of WHYY-TV called The Montiers, An American Story. The Montier family lived in the house for nearly 100 years until the 1860s. There were 12 members of the extended Montier family that served in the Union Army during the Civil War. Thanks for taking the time to tour the Montier homestead. It truly is another classic home in a classic neighborhood looking for the next steward to call it home.